after removing the distributor from the red car, I thought I would clean it up and see what happened to its curve because this was going from 8 to about 23 degrees and then that was about it. So I expect to find just a weak primary spring, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it apart and I'm going to give it a soak and give it a clean and then put it on my distributing machine and see what uh, see what happened to it. After pulling the cap off um, and the module, I did notice that the module basically didn't have any more uh, compound on the uh, heat sink surface anymore. This is mostly just corroded aluminum. And if you look at the distributor surface, you'll see that there's, you know, there's nothing here, um, which I think is quite interesting because normally I have to coat these with heat sink uh, compound material so they don't, uh, they don't get too hot. But anyway, this one didn't have any left, which is very interesting. Not that this was a problem, like this module was working fine, but uh, I'm sure it wasn't helping. So anyway, I'm going to keep taking it apart. After getting the top half dismantled, I was able to get to the springs. And uh, just for fun, I figured I'd check this out before I soak it in my solvent tank and get it all clean. But from what I can tell, it just seems like this secondary spring is really stiff. Um, when I manually advance it, it seems to be working. Um, even seems like it's engaging at halfway through the motion, but uh, from what I can tell, at least with my fingers, it seems like it's a really strong spring. So, um, I'd be curious to see what spring rate this actually has and how uh, how fast this thing needs to be turning before it actually hits full advance. So, anyway, those are my observations, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and give this a bit of a clean and, and then um, strip it down all the way and, and get it on my distributor machine and see what, what's going on. Well, it's the next day, and I gave it a bit of a wash in the solvent tank, but you can still see it's pretty dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my vapor blasting cabinet and make it look really, really nice. Same with this top half. Just give it a give it a nice finish. And in the meantime, while that's getting cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and stick this on the distributor machine and see what the curve is. Well, I got the body parts back from the vapor blasting process and as you can see they're extremely clean and shiny. Uh, I really like doing this process to original parts because it just gives them that nice fresh factory look. Nice. Anyway, um, yeah I don't spend a lot of time cleaning up in here because honestly no one sees it but I do at least give it a wash in the solvent tank. And um, obviously after the uh, vapor blasting process, I have to thoroughly clean everything, but this is just an idea of what it's going to look like when it's back together. So uh, anyway, the next steps are to stick this into the distributor machine and see what's going on. Um, first thing I'll do is actually measure the rate of advance. It says on here 13, 13 and a half somewhere. I saw it earlier. Oh yeah, here it is. 13 and a half degrees. So I'm going to measure that first to see if this actually is advancing 13 and a half degrees and then I'll go and check on the springs after that. So I've got my distributor in my little jig here to measure advance and um, right now zero is set at 100 degrees here so we'll just count off how many degrees this thing actually has advance wise. There's 10 15. Okay, so despite the cam plate down here saying 13 and a half, this thing actually advances 15 degrees total. So what I have here is a plot of all the numbers from my distributor machine. I've plotted them in orange so you can see here. So the timing started out about 400 RPMs, went to 16 at 2, and then uh, finished at 30 at 6,000 RPMs. So that's this orange line here. And the blue line above it is how I measured the timing on the car. So for instance, it was idling about 8 degrees, and then it would hit 20 degrees at 2,000 RPMs. And then at 4, it only hit 23, but it just kept going. 
And obviously I didn't rev it to 6,000 RPMs to find out what the total advance was, but I knew that 23 wasn't going to be enough. So uh, the reason I made a new distributor curve for this car is because in green here, it's kind of an ideal scenario. So somewhere in the 20 range, and then you want to be somewhere in the 30 range at 4,000. But above 4,000, uh, more timing is not going to be useful. The A series really finishes up by about 4,000 RPMs. And uh, when I did timing sweeps, I I found that this car actually preferred to have 22 degrees at 2,000 RPMs, and then at 4,000 RPMs, it preferred 32. So uh, if I had kept the original Lucas unit and adjusted this by 7 degrees to reach my 32 degree mark at 4,000, not only would the timing keep advanced, but, uh, you know, this would have been 27 degrees at 2,000. So, uh Optimizing the original Lucas for this car would not have been useful at all. So I went ahead and made a curve that matched the one in red here. And uh, the car performed very well. But you can see in this shaded area, this is the difference. You know, 7 degrees at 4,000 RPMs is a lot of advance to be missing out on. And then, of course, at some point, it just becomes over-advanced up in the five to 6,000 range. So uh, this is why you want to... Pay attention to your timing and check where you are in your curve and then see how the engine responds to adjustments. Like I said, I initially started out at 20, at 2, and then added a couple degrees here and there until I reached 22 and found that the engine really didn't want more than 22 degrees at 2. Same thing at 4,000. And these are on-the-road uh, tests, so um, this is something that you could, you could figure out and um, correct your distributor issues. But anyway, I just thought I'd show that in graphical form what was going on in my head at least and why I knew that I would have to put a new distributor into this car. Overall the car performed very well um, on this curve. Uh, the customer was very happy with it and um, uh, this was actually the second curve I did. So the first one I did was it was this one in green but I noticed that uh, the wear and tear in the system meant that my idle timing was in the 15 to 18 range and so it meant that I just needed to add more uh, advance on the cam to bring the initial timing down. Even though I could have left it at idling at 18, um, it just seemed silly. So I brought it down to uh, 12, I think. But yeah, this this red curve pretty much represents the, the timing profile that I left the car with. And um, like I said, it, it worked out really well. I also want to point out one more thing about this uh, Lucas unit. So at idle around, you know, 800, 900 RPMs, uh, I noticed that the timing was not rock solid. And that's because the springs uh, returned to zero at 330 RPMs. So about 660, 700 RPMs, this distributor was already providing advance, which is well below the idle threshold for this motor. So, um, you know, I was getting eight degrees, but that was eight degrees with the distributor already advancing. And the one that I built I didn't start advancing until a thousand, at least a thousand RPM. So anything below a thousand, my idle numbers were rock solid, and I could just move the timing up and down as I see fit based on um, using my timing light. But it was only because I built the distributor to do that that I was able to do that. But otherwise, you know, if you're if you're trusting that this Lucas unit was accurate, and you were setting it to say, you know, twelve degrees or something at idle, because maybe that's what the book said, um, you know you would have actually had, again, four degrees added to this would be 12. So you'd have been at 24 here, you'd have been over advanced. And of course, uh, four degrees here, you'd have been at 27 or yeah. So anyway, this is another reason why you need to set and adjust your idle uh, spring rate, or I guess the spring that controls the idle timing. You need to make sure it comes in just after your normal idle uh, position. Well, I'm back on this distributor, and after you saw those curves, I'm going to go ahead and find some springs that were suitable for this. The original springs here, there's the secondary, there's the primary. Uh, I didn't think the primary was that bad other than it came on too early, or I mean, I should say that the spring was too soft, so the distributor started advancing too soon. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and find some, some springs for this. Now, I've already gone ahead and reduced the amount of movement that the cam has. Originally it was supposed to be 13 and a half according to the stamping, but uh, when I measured it, it was at 15 degrees. So I went ahead and reduced this down to 13. 
Um, this is just the build that I'm going to go with on this one. I want to have one that gives me a little more flexibility at idle, so this is the one I'm going to go with. And 13 degrees is going to get me there. And I just need to find a primary and a secondary spring to give me the curve that I wanted to, to have on this car originally. Now, in the previous clip, you saw that the chart, this chart here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and just make a, a green curve for this, this unit so that I have that profile to work with. And um, so that's what I'm shooting for. So I'm hopefully get 20 at 2 and 30 at 4. But that's the curve that I'm going for. I, I'm not going for this this orange one that was in there originally. Like I said, I want the inflection point here to be a 4,000, and then I want it to go flat. So this is the curve I'm going to build for this this distributor. So I just need to find a set of springs, and I think uh, I think that should be good. Now I've also already gone through the trouble of cleaning all the parts inside here and putting in some fresh grease. So once I found the springs, I can just reassemble it, and it'll be good to go for the next car. Well, after 21 different combinations of springs for the primary and the secondary, I finally achieved the curve that I was looking for on this distributor. And all that's left to do is lubricate everything and reassemble, so that's what I'm going to do next. And here it is, all back together. Uh, new cap rotor, wires, and here's a matching high power coil to go with it. And uh, you'll notice I haven't fitted the module because uh, on the red car, this original module is actually the two-pin style, and the modern replacements are three pins, so um, I won't fit this just in case the car that it's going on to uses the three-pin module, or if it has a two-pin, I can supply this one, um, but I'll go ahead and wait to, to attach that. I do carry the adapter harness just in case I need to change one out, but otherwise, um, yeah, this distributor is ready to go. So, if you guys thought that uh, project was useful or interesting, let me know in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes like this or another repair video like the red car. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, send them to me. Or if you need tuning or distributor work, let me know as well. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another episode.